right, so the fire <laughs> department, their total budget is $3,865,302, which is $210,847, or 5.77% greater than the 2018 default budget. Wages make up $3,346,614, or 86.58% of the budget. Gas and diesel makes up $18,014, or 0.47%. Utilities make up $96,282, or 2.49%. And items not categorized make up $404,393, or 10.46%. The next slide just gives you a breakdown of all of those numbers that I just went over for you, showing you where they all um, stand in regards to the total budget. The breakdown of the 5.77% increase, wages account for $172,488, or 4.72%. Items not categorized account for $30,485, or 0.83%. Utilities account for $6,050, or 0.17%. And gasoline and diesel account for $1,825, or 0.05%. And then the last slide shows you the breakdown of the 5.77 wages in the large blue circle there. That's okay. The uh, just so you know, Christy has an overall budget uh, summary, which I, 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 since we already had one via the video snippet, I asked to put that off until next meeting when we do TP door. You'll do the overall at that point. Thank you. But I did observe from that, Christy, that. Uh, when I added the benefits and the wages together, they came up to basically 50% of the total budget, right? Yeah. So you, you, the point on wages, Brian, is very sensitive to everyone, and rightfully so. It's half the budget, essentially, yes. the overall budget. So with that, uh, I believe Regina wants the floor. So Ms. Barnes, please regale us. Christy, out of the $172,488, how much of that is contractual, do you know? The majority, because there's only one position in the fire department that's not um, part of the collective bargaining agreement. Right, and how much did we give, uh, it's the chief, right? Mm -hmm. How much did we give him for raise this year? I believe it was <coughs> 1. 1.8, whatever the board approved, I don't have that number. With oh, okay, but it was, five. okay. But it, it was the uh, normal was, that we gave yes. across the board to The everyone. merits and the merit line, yes. So that's the only thing that is not contractual? Yes. Okay. Okay, are there any questions for Christy or, the, or anyone else in the room? Mr. Lapham. Yes. Um, oh, let's go section by section like we promised. I'm sorry. Section by section. Oh, well, I'm going section by section. All right, so we're under uh, administration first, right? Yeah. Are there any questions I'm on? I'm just going by the budget breakdown to start with. What is, could you explain <coughs> other items? Oh, the presentation, you mean? Yeah. Things that didn't fall under um, any of, the, of those categories there. So it would be things like repairs and maintenance, vehicle maintenance, supplies and expenses, um, what else is the new equipment, replacement equipment. Now, wouldn't that be on its own line? It is. Well, it's not a line item. It's just a pie chart. And what she's saying there is she's got a, a, a legend there, wages, gas and diesel, utilities, if it wasn't one of those three, it falls under items not categorized. So yeah. she just created those. Well, 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 that's, that's just, what I was that's just for the presentation, it's not for the budget. Yeah, that's all it is. What is well, we're going to get into that section by section. Four, three, nine, three. We're going to get into that section by section. Okay. So. So that will be across the budget. It will be like yeah. on your repairs and maintenance line or your supplies and expenses across the budget in those sections. Okay, so now we're moving on to the section known as administration. Are there any questions or comments on administration of the fire department? I see the, uh, Mr. Chairman, we Mr. Raise our hands. Yes. Okay. Uh, Chief A. Diesel is up 35%. Yes, sir. Is that just. That's yeah, and these are the numbers that Christy uses to, right. to yeah. calculate. Yeah, we use the price per gallon that the town is okay. getting out of the WEX account. And I don't, I don't note that that's subject to further adjustment in December. That's correct. Okay. Okay. It's, also, it's also based on our average use, mm -hmm. so Christy does those numbers. Mr. LeBranch. Um, <clears throat> I want to just mention yeah, something that, right. that you already mentioned. Fun. Actually, Regina it's asked it's you this question at the Board of Selectmen's meeting. This is based on 
uh, the, the overall the budget for the fire department is based on staffing that remains the same as it has been, which is eight. Eight so, on. Thank you for and asking. Then, and then could you explain, just Certainly put can. a little bit of explanation about that? So currently we are staffed with uh, 36 on-duty firefighters, uh, chief, deputy, EMS officer, fire prevention officer, four um, uh, fire alarm operators, and a full-time secretary and a part-time secretary for fire prevention. For that, that breaks down to nine per group, so there's nine on per day. One captain, one lieutenant, and seven firefighters. If a firefighter calls out sick or is injured or is um, on vacation, typically when we run to eight, it's called running to eight for us, uh, when we run to eight, that means that the first person to call out is left vacant. So our shift will be at eight. The captains are always filled, the lieutenants are always filled, one firefighter position will be left vacant. The second firefighter call out sick, might hurt, get hurt or whatever it might be, that position is filled with overtime um, for the duration of that shift. We went to the board in June, or maybe it was late May, and we requested permission to potentially overspend our budget because what we wanted to do was provide the, the proper staffing, which is nine in my opinion, and, and greater, and that's something, another topic, but to maintain the level of nine throughout the, the summer season. We continued that until today. Uh, obviously, the town's in, in um, it's very tight right now, so I have just rescinded that, and we're rolling back to eight starting today. Mm -hmm. So. This budget moving forward has, in, a, in the plan, uh, is going to run down to a minimum of eight. That's how it's planned out because the, the proper amount to staff is, it's a significant increase in the overall line item for overtime. Uh, we were able to do it for the duration that I've done it and I feel very comfortable that we stayed within our constraints. But moving forward, there's, there's not an increase in overtime. You, you will see an increase in overtime that I explain for other reasons, but the increase in overtime is not there for that reason. Thank you. For to maintain nine throughout the year. Right. Any Thank other questions much. on administration? <laughs> Mr. Latt. How many hours are in the shift? 24. No, I mean, one of the, th breaking it down, are the fire, <coughs> as, as that component of nine people on duty, on duty for the 24 hours? Correct. Okay. So, it, and it can happen, um, a firefighter may take 10 hour vacation so he'll be out for the day portion and be in at night. Um, when that happens, then the day portion will be left vacant, and then they'll come in at night where it's staffed at 9 at night. Thank you. Yes, sir. Mr. Uh, Morrow. I have just questions, and it's more of a generic question. Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> and it, it revolves a little bit of what's come up about the schools across the country. And a lot of the schools went on strike, which was sad due to the fact that we're getting $40,000 paid for a job that they deserve much more money. And the more I thought about it, it made me think about one account it, and I don't have those figures, that it made me think about the police department and fire department. So my request or question to you is, where do we stand, because we hear about we, it's hard to fill roles and et cetera, et cetera. Where do we stand in New Hampshire and this area, like the fire department on various levels, lieutenants and yourself and the regular, Firemen, but they're all perfect. God, don't make me want to say regular. That's that, that's a bad no way expressing right? it. Yeah. I, I don't mean it that way. Um, where do we stand with, with our wages versus the towns around us? And I mean to have figures on what the town Portsmouth pays this particular lieutenant averaging, and the averaging we're doing that same type of role sure. in Hampton. So I can compare an apple to an apple. What I'm hearing, and I see, and I, I'm going along with uh, Brian, when you see this big number and there's nothing we can do about it, there is something we can do about it. And what happens will be a lot of the uh, people, when they see a $1.4 million increase, they're going to, I'm interpreting a lot of people are going to vote for the default budget. I'd rather have more information about what those wages are composed of so we'd have a better understanding of it. If they're low, I'm in favor of raising those wages, period. If they're average, it makes a better thing. If they're high, it helps us understand something else. But I'm more concerned about, in a sense, low. But we, we don't, I don't have, we, maybe other people don't want this. But I'd like to have something, and I did look a little up on the internet, mm -hmm. doing, doing such studies, but I know you could do, your department could do a better job. Is that, and I'd like to have that in writing so we can make a good comparison. 
So I, I know that both locals have looked at that as they have um, worked towards collective bargaining and they have sought out similar departments. But as you all know, Hampton is very unique in, in its nature. We're a town of 14,970 people, um, nine, 976 people, according to the 2010 census, on an average night in November. But come July at 95 degrees, we no longer have 14,000 people. We're significantly higher. So to compare us to like towns, it's very difficult to do. Well, They've done that. Minute, a lieutenant is a lieutenant. No That's true. Working in the summer or in the winter. That was my question. That's true, but they were also, uh, we're, we're essentially the largest city in the state at that point, and we're understaft by that at, comparison. At that point, so, there might be. So that right. still is the question of what does it even do? Even still, if you compare us to Salem, or if you compare us to Portsmouth, Portsmouth. or Nashua, or Manchester, other people will have it look. So to look across a broad spectrum, I know that they've researched that, and I'll see if I can't get those numbers for you. Um, I know that the town has also done a study where they've done a wage comparison study for uh, non-union employees. So they were using specific towns as well, and that information came about uh, as a result of you know their their hard efforts to make sure that they compared like towns. So is that what you're asking for, Dave? Is a wage comparison? I'm looking for a wage comparison for somebody to just keep it at a supermarket. The manager of the shop, sure. and save the manager of Shaw is the manager of you know Hannaford's. All managers, whatever. I'm just looking for the generic thing, and I was able to look that up, but it was kind of generic. And then when I looked right. at Hampton, it wasn't there at all. Could be there, but I couldn't find it. So, so I would like to well, get that so I have a better understanding of where we really sit. It, it's it's just to being, being transparent. Uh, I think we have a great fire department. I Don't concur. misinterpret my questions, please. No, I, and I certainly understand your question, and I also agree with you. We have a great fire department. So, Chief, so you, would that be a reasonable thing for you to produce? Uh, it, okay. It'll take some time, but yeah. Okay. I think we could. We can yeah, think I can get that right. Okay. Yeah, right. How long might that take? Not long. So we can't do it tonight. Not tonight, but no, tonight. Tonight. <laughs> like, tonight. Say within two weeks. Oh yeah. That fair. Yeah. And then you can come back to us mm -hmm. whenever you do. Thank you, yeah. sir. Any other? questions or comments on administration. just want to make one more comment uh, based on what Chief Ayotte was right on. But I urge everybody to look at 1998 minutes of the Capital Improvement Program meeting. Back then, we put a line item in, and Chief Sawyer might remember this, for both police and fire, knowing that we would need, Brian Lapham remembers, because he was involved in it. And the reason I bring that up is we had people with planning minds back then. And now we're still sitting here in 2018 talking about the fire department, which is Still not fully staffed. We're, we're aware of that. But those thoughts came back years ago. And so I'm anxious to hear in this year, coming year, Chief, how we can get to there and, and get people together because the staffing shouldn't be, I mean, I watched in the summer, you went through, I mean, it's crazy what you have to do. So I just want to put that out there. So historical things are very important in this town. They don't talk about it much at all the meetings because they don't, maybe they don't want to hear about it. But those of us who were part and parcel of that, I'm going to continue to bring that to the forefront because we did have those discussions, and Mr. Cutting, uh, Captain Cutting, can tell you as well, and, and uh, others. But thank you. Welcome, everybody. Happy with the administration. Yeah. Uh, I do have a question. Um, <clears throat> the new equipment under administration has zero, and that's that's a fine number. <laughs> I'd move to approve that number. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Blatt. But you know, I've been reviewing, as Christy knows, I've been reviewing the fixed, fixed asset policy. And in there, it says something about each department head will produce a fixed asset data sheet annually. Which we do with Ms. Uh, Pulliam. She, she asked right, so that. Has that, been, that. Has that been done for 2018? Yeah, that's actually, you have been, you've been updating that, right? Yeah. So our fixed asset over $5,000, if I'm not mistaken. Is that accurate? Generally, yeah. yeah. They have different categories. Right. Yeah. What kind of asset it is. Mm -hmm. So each one of those gets a, a tag, okay. basically, so it has its own uh, Yeah, I'm familiar with the process. Right. Space. I just wanted to be, it was done for 2018. Simple, yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, that's we, can, we can look at it subsequently. Right. We do my update. You're not going to buy anything else for the rest of the year? Apparently I'm not, not letting them. Did I hear her say they were doing like a quarterly? No, I'm just saying that, it's, first of all, 2018 is not over. It right. On a quarterly basis, we run reports in the finance department. But there is no fixed asset report for 2018 that's complete because the year is not complete. Okay. So, um... We do them as we enter the bill. I'm curious when we'll be able to see that. I mean, uh, because we can't see the final operating numbers uh, until after our final review, which is unfortunate. But is the fixed asset going to be available? The fixed asset report? 
Yeah. It can the unaudited version can be available. Sure. Okay. That's Great. part of the audit too. Though. Thank you. So, we generally in the past have yeah. <coughs> gotten to a certain point and then from there it was just okay take the last two weeks and you can figure it out mm -hmm. yeah well, i know but we only recently adopted this fix, fixed asset policy as a <coughs> consequence of going to gatsby yes and i'm just following up on items related to that gatsby changeover so we'll talk more on that subsequently thank you for that chief uh, and so we're all done with administration, right? Okay, great. Fire suppression. Anyone have any comments or thoughts? Mr. LeBranch? Yes, under um, replacement equ equipment, um, I believe that um, that's where the Zodiac's outboard motor is going to come from. And has been replaced this year, as a matter of fact. Uh, that was going to be the next thing, is that that was, it's already been purchased out of 2018 money. That's correct. Okay. We just so did that last week. That's going to be adjusted. Christy will make an adjustment to that. What else is coming out of there? Because I know the, the Zodiac was about $7,132, I think. Correct. Yeah. So what else is... So that line item has, in, it has increased as a result of some several items that were uh, changes. Uh, as you might imagine, we have to do flow testing. We have to do air monitoring and air testing. And then replacement of SCBA equipment, um, the face pieces, mm -hmm. um, they they went up in price. And if they're scratched or if they're cracked, then they have to be replaced. And that re reflects that cost increase. Um, additionally, there's also a reflection of a device that we use to um, test for fit for SCBA masks. So that was put in there because previously that, that hadn't been accounted for for, um, for calibration. So and, and one other thing. Um, yes, the, I, I don't know if I'm if I'm correct with the name of this. Was it a Zoll chest compression board? Was that the name of the company? Zoll. Zoll. Yep. Okay. Um, it's I, called Auto Pulse. There were three of them that we purchased. Mm -hmm. That came off of the with, Fund Twenty Seven, oh, which okay. is our EMS account. Okay. Yep. That's different. Okay. Yes, it is. That is because I thought perhaps that's where the Zoll chest. And that you know that's that's quite a. Uh, wonderful piece of equipment. Do you have them yet? We do. We actually just completed training today. They'll be uh, rolled out in the next two to three days. We're going to see that probably by Monday morning. It'll be on each um, ambulance. Right. And um, the, the training went very well. Very good. Thank you, Chief. Yes, sir. Any, Mr. Larry Wobber. Just had a comment on the Zodi I mean, Marine 2, uh, 20 years ago. Yeah, that 20 years ago. Summer yeah. of 1998 when Skip Sullivan and Bill Wren and I took the first ride to it's amazing it's been uh, 20 years and, and of course we yeah. went on from there. I have a particular question I want to commend the fire department for addressing and all the members of the fire department for addressing a very important issue and I, I want to make sure I'm on the same page, protective clothing and specifically talking about turnout gear. Mm -hmm. I know you've had meetings with various selectmen and various people in town and really commend you on that. Is it my understanding that currently you plan before the end of this year to purchase my number, I'm just guessing, four sets of, if there's money left over in this year's budget, and this is what this is for for next year to buy more? No. It isn't. Um, so in 2015, when I presented the budget, um, what we were talking about then was a program replacement. Right. So what we did was, the first year we did six sets, then four sets subsequent <laughs> years until we got to 2019. In 2019, the remaining sets that are firefighter gears, uh, so like the, the, pr the people who are on the front line, their, their gear, there's five left remaining, um, they need to be replaced. This year, we've already made a purchase of four sets. Correct. There's a little bit money le uh, of money left in that line item, and Deputy's actually already put in for two sets right now, but I'm holding on to that um, till we see where we stand uh, financially this, in the next 30 days, and I've talked to Mr. Walsh about that. But those two sets will be part of the next series of five, but the program replacement was to get all primary sets of gear replaced so that everybody would have a current set of primary gear, their gear that they're wearing every day. Yeah. When they are exposed to chemicals or to smoke, they need to wash their gear, they need a second set. Uh, Mr. Welch and I have been working with, a, a moving forward with the capital improvement plan to purchase a second set for the firefighters so that they would have that available equipment, which is exceptionally necessary, especially what, what, what we're finding out with all the carcinogens that we're being exposed to and, and increasing cancer risk. So that second set is a group purchase as opposed to a program replacement, which we've done up until this point. So there's not enough money in that line item anyway to buy five sets. Okay, so let me ask you this. Is, is it safe to say there is a revolving fund idea for a warrant article 
starting this year? That was Mr. Walters' proposal. Right, which is not a, not a bad idea, but this is what I want to, and I said this to you in, in February, mm -hmm. when it kind of high school. Mm -hmm. You came back and you, you had 220000 left in your budget. And my question, well, it was pretty darn close to last year. Okay, so whatever it was. Why wouldn't we have then? Because turnout gear, when I talk to the fire department guys, that's one of the biggest issues they have. Why wouldn't we have, and you see where my mind's going, we talk about budgets and we talk about budget increases, which is separate from wages. This is a critical component of the fire department. Why wouldn't we have purchased some of those out of the 2017 budget before we did last year's? Because every year we come to this, and, I, and it's just a question I raise. I understand. And you um, already talked about that. In, in right, and, and as I told you that day, that our goal is to make sure that they have all a primary set of gear. Not everybody did at that point. And additionally, we're part of a bigger piece of the, we're a small pie portion in a bigger pie. So the town has a goal too. And we're part of that. So at the end of the year, when the brakes are pumped for everybody, we have to slow down on spending. There's other people that have come in line, and sometimes that's the fire department. We've come in line, and they say, hey, you, you need to buy this, you need to buy that. But you so at the end of that year, there were wage line items left, right. and to purchase equipment like that, that, that's not what happened. But to David's point earlier, when we talk about comparison with communities, mm -hmm. and having come from a, a background with people currently in high positions in fire department, police, and schools, and everything else, the fire department and bigger cities having two sets of turnout gear is critical. And we saw that major fire down the beach in April. And though your guys were coming out in there like, I mean, can you imagine what, what is on their bill note? I mean, what's on their uh, the uniform, whatever you want to call it. So if people are requesting that, we seem to find, and this is what's going to be my whole mandate during this whole budget, we seem to find places where we find money to, to grab this or grab that or all of a sudden increase somebody's salary at another way, but we don't seem to find with money's left a critical component. And so I say to you, Chief Ayotte, you got to keep fighting for that, and, and we're going to have the revolving fund. But if you feel we need it, the old expression Skip Solomon used to say, you know, maybe I don't need it, but I'm going to, maybe I can't have it, but I'm going to tell you that I need it now. And that's what I want to hear you tell us and tell the selectmen so that we don't get into this thing where, oh, we're going to be here another year and we bought two sets versus nine sets. That's all I'm saying. So that's. That's where, I, that's where my mind is. Well, why don't we ask the chief now? Do you need it now? Certainly, and that's why I put it into the capital improvement plan for 2019. No, I mean, the two sets for everybody now. Yeah, right now we are, we're, with the, with the purchases that we made this year, there are five remaining sets of gear that need to go as primary, and then essentially all of our fire, firefighters need secondary set of gear. And so that's more than what you're asking for in this budget, correct? Or more than what's in this budget now, right? That's correct, because I did it as a capital improvement. Separate line. It's part of my capital improvement plan. It's the only thing that I asked for. Capital improvement plan is not getting any money. That's that. correct. That's what I'm saying. That's so that's the not issue. a budget. That's how, much a nice more, how much more money do you need in the budget to do the two sets? I believe that the capital improvement will, and you're going to get me on the number because I didn't look at it today, but I think it's 134000 134000 yeah. Okay. So, uh, is that right, Mr. Pluff? Are you, had you, had you well, I, I haven't got it here, but it says five at $3,154. they are going up. So yeah. they're, they're right. going we also know the 3% price increase. So, if so you can think of right around 140. And remember, capital, uh, a capital improvement program, that's a, that's a placeholder. Unless unless we as a community, we used to put one major project a year, we'd select it would be a proponent to a warrant article. You could put 20 things on capital improvement, but if we don't have it placed in a certain year, it could sit there like some things have for 10 years. No, but to your point, Mr. Warburton, as, uh, as a placeholder and asking to prioritize, that's my priority. Well, whether I mean, if you look at the fixed asset policy, the uniforms apparently do not fall into capital, uh, so it's probably not the right place to. It's a it's a group purchase over thirty thousand dollars. So uh, as a block, it would come in as one hundred thirty. I understand that, but according to fixed asset, it is based on individual units, not group purchases. Okay. So it, it, it's I understand your point. Um, well, that's what the that's what the policy is. Okay. Um, so whether I, I don't think it probably belongs in, in, under capital. It's not a fixed asset according to the policy. Uh, fixed asset is what capital is, right? So uh, if, if you need additional money, I need you to sit there and say I need additional money because I need this now. That's what this committee was waiting to hear, or not hear. Certainly, and, and we have the price for the new price is 34000 right? It's 126000 just for the... 
for ten for forty of those, correct? Yes. That's not how much. It's a little bit more than that. Yeah, that price has gone, gone up. It's gone yeah. up. Yeah, that, we know that price has gone up. It's gone up. Are you uncomfortable with the numbers? That, and, and no, hundred. Maybe uh, you can come back with us with the right number at a subsequent time. Would that be better? I can. Yeah, well, I, I want to know. I can what tell you, you that one hundred forty thousand dollars will cover forty cents a year. Yes. And what I what I would recommend, because to respect Mr. Welch too, and I don't expect an answer tonight to put the chief on the spot. However, I would recommend or request that as we're looking to the end of December, if you feel that you're, and you may not. But if you have money left in that budget, I think it behooves anyone. I think we should buy some this year as well. Because, and, and I'm only saying this, I hope you come back to us when we're talking in the ensuing months that that could be a possibility. If it isn't, it isn't. But that's where we got to be at because that is a critical component of that position outside of wages of doing the job and having the proper equipment much like the police department chief so comes in and all the things they need. But right. we, we want. I want to observe that in previous years uh, we've added to things, uh, I believe it's the police oh, budget, yeah. for yeah. example, yeah. and then subsequently missed the Welsh found money in the uh, remaining existing budget, and so we then lowered it back to its original We may number. do that this year. Yep. So right. we could do that right now if we wish. I would, I would have no problem if they came back with more information mm -hmm. uh, because we're still going to file a review. I don't want them to feel like, you know, we've already asked Deputy Kennedy on some information on uh, things earlier. So maybe they could add that. And if it takes two or three weeks, we're not going anywhere. The final review of the budget is January or so. So it's like we can, that's fine. But I appreciate the discussion and, and the attention to this because I think it's extremely important. And the only other thing I'll say is your work as comp costs have, has been pretty darn good, but there's another reason for that. The buildings in Hampton are built so much better now in other communities. You don't have the amount of structural, my terminology, and you have so many, well, the best trained firefighters in the state. So that's a good thing we can say to the community that this, your budget is pretty well prepared for what you need and look into the future and all these other things that are happening aside from that. We just want to keep the ball rolling. Thank you. So. Um just want to finish up on this point and I'll give you the phone a minute. As I understand it, the budget is projected to have a very small surplus uh, this year, right, Christy? About 60000 I heard the number to be. Okay, good. Thank uh, you. So that's going to be enough to, to fund uh, uh, the uh, additional protective clothing. Uh, if that number is correct, I don't know if it is or not. Is it, Christy? That was at the end of September, Ugh. correct? No, no, no. I'm well, saying projected had the end of September. You still had. Well, I'd have to go back. Wait a minute. Where would it go? It was like fifty-nine thousand. I haven't done any year in projection. That's okay. okay. So sixty. Right. So he's probably going to be. Well, that's okay. <coughs> I mean, so that's may I suggest, Brian? Yep. That um, we suggest to the town manager and board of selectmen that if the, if there is sufficient surplus money, that this committee is um, inclined to suggest that they make it a a high priority consideration to fund protective yeah. closing out of this year's Absolutely. budget. Absolutely. Is I, that what I'm hearing you want uh, to make a motion I on? Like that. Well, I don't, I'm not going to make a motion now. I'm saying I'm putting the information out there. Right. That's what the proper way of okay. doing you know. So we will Mr. come LeBranche. to that. We'll come to that. All right. So the question I have is, does anyone have a second set at this point? That will within time frame? No. None of the firemen have a second set of not in date. <coughs> Not in date. Nope. The recommended no. NFPA uh, change I, over is 10 years. I find that very distressing, extremely distressing, considering the passagens and the situation. You have you have the machines at the... We have new, an extractor at each... Yeah, you have the machines set. to clean them. Right. But nobody has a second set. So if you go out in two calls in one day and they're both fires... They're putting, they're putting on, on. Yeah. I don't like the sound of that. Sir, yeah. Mr. How long does it take to clean them? Uh, about 45 minutes for a wash cycle and about six hours to dry. Wow. So you couldn't go it. If you had to go out again a second time, that's, that's right. That's right. unacceptable. It's not a good thing, but another, just one other point. Um, <coughs> it, I, I so agree that it, you know, everybody should have a second set, but, but I also want to mention that in, at some fire departments, and some of them are our neighbors, okay, <laughs> some of the firemen are wearing the clothes from hand-me-downs from, uh, <laughs> they don't even have one set, never mind. Well, and, and I discussed this a minute ago about primary sets. Right. We have firefighters who did not get a, a primary set of turnout gear. They're wearing somebody else's. 
that's that's the way it is, mm -hmm. and I've been trying to change that so. through program replacement. We've spent approximately twenty thousand, twenty five thousand dollars a year on gear, mm -hmm. and we're trying to do that so that new new hires get new gear, and people who were purchased in twenty oh nine there was a there was an AFG grant that was received where they did a block purchase of thirty three sets. Those come to come of age in twenty nineteen. They're ten years old. Some of those firefighters still have a year left on that gear. That's why I did the program replacement with the breakdown that I did, which was six, four, four, and five. So when we get there, everybody who was purchased in 2009 will have a new set as a primary set. All the new firefighters coming in should by then have a brand new set, mm -hmm. primary gear. Right. Mm -hmm. But they need, everybody, everybody needs, needs a backup. second set. Oh, so yep. That's important. Okay. Any other questions on fire suppression? Mr. Uh, okay, pardon my ignorance, but. Overtime wages? Yes, sir. Okay. And Which section are you in, sir? Suppression. Okay. Fire suppression, of course. Fire suppression. Uh, in 80, uh, let's see, in 2017, your actual number was 87,571. You but uh, for 2018, you budgeted 174,000. Your actual year to date, as of September 30th, 2018 is 65,298, which gives you an average of about 7,255 a month. And you're, requ you're requesting 195, which is a 12% increase. It is. Do you intend to use? We'll uh, be using most of that. This is hunting season. Most of our firefighters are hunters. <laughs> so between the months of November, December, we see a lot more people out. Okay. The addition, the 12%, it, it, Ms. Jones, you might remember this. We discussed training, and at the time when I had put in the fire training, the live fire training, we had the wages included in that training line item. Those wage line items have been moved to the appropriate line item now for wages, for the training for our rescue swimmer and for live fire. That's so what that increases. The increase is entirely a result of moving money out of training and into this line item. Correct, and then you'll see there's an okay. increase in training because of two other items that we needed to add. Okay. And that's why we saw the increase from the 2017 overtime wages, actual were 87,000, yeah. and the requested for 174 in 2018. So, that's yeah. that was the jump for yeah. this year. Yeah. That was the the yeah that was the Not increase from 174 to 195, yeah. right? But you also you know I'm projecting out in May for 18 months from now, and I'm hoping against hope and please I hope that they all stay safe. But if there's an injury, I have to be able to cover that. And a firefighter getting injured, shoulders, knees, whatever it might be, backs, um, that's a long duration out. And I have to be prepared for that throughout the entire year. But so that's you said, that preparation. But you said hunting, and I can appreciate that. But <laughs> my, the question I still have is 87,000 was the actual in, in 2017. Why did it jump up to that big increase this current year, not the proposal? Why did we go up 90,000 for this year's budget in the overtime? No, well, it, it was. It is. What you, right. You're looking at the actual, not right. the budget the actual, from that, yeah. from 2017. Oh, I know. The, I'm sorry, the budget. The actual way I was spent, excuse me. I'm sorry. Okay. And last year was the default, so. But why did we go up to 174 as far as requested? That was, that was the, oh, that was from 2017. That's what, okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay. That's, now I get it. Thank and you. Your actual year to date is 65. 65. Yeah. So you anticipate in spending 100 and roughly. I anticipate spending more. Yeah. Now. I anticipate spending more. Spending so, more. Yeah, I can't more. tell you how much more. I don't have injury right now. The, all my firefighters are working in healthy, thank God. But if that happens between now and December, then that's where that money will come from. Good. So thank there's you. a potential, obviously, okay, you know, yeah. as. So there. Mr. LeBranch. Um, Chief, you want to think? under okay. um, equipment, other. Yes, sir. You have a number of small items. I do. That, you know, add up to $18,000. The question for you on the. Um, do you have a piece of equipment on each fire truck that, um, that you'd have on a boat, for instance, uh, a canister that you pull a, a rope and it, it folds out into an inflatable raft? We do not. However, we did purchase a small Zodiac craft this year. I believe it was uh, $1,700, a little under. $1,300. Um, and that was because of what we experienced last year. The deputy uh, lobbied for it to get a small boat, small craft, and this is a five-person craft. That will allow us, if somebody is stranded in a home, we're able to go get them, retrieve them, bring them back to a large um, truck, which the, and the chief has been working on to get us a, a high driving truck so that we're not driving our fire engines through oh, deep yeah. water now. 
Um, so we have that in, at the beach station. We don't have something that's a, a portable raft like you're talking about, no. But would it be, I, I just, I was thinking about last year and the flooding down at the beach and. We've actually purchased a small Zodiac craft for that. Okay, but that means that it's something that you can put on, on top of the fire truck or? It, it'll actually, well in that area we're, we're anticipating that and the Chief Sawyer might be able to speak to that. We have a uh, uh, surplus military vehicle that we'll hopefully be using if we do have high water, we'll which I think you've heard about, about that, that already. We're yeah. going to talk about that later, but I just, I I just thought to myself, um, if you had a boat and <laughs> you would have one of those inflatable rafts for an emergency. And I don't know what they <coughs> cost, and I don't, you know, it's in a canister, you pull a rope and it inflates. And so it wouldn't, <laughs> no, it's, I don't, I think it would be reasonable to have, have one of those on every fire truck because you could have a flash flood uptown as well as downtown. You could have a, a, any, you know, anywhere. Yep, and what we've experienced is more standing water uh, or flooding that is associated with tide. Um, so as far as flash flooding like that, the standing water or the tides coming across roadways certainly have a major impact on us. Um, not where we'll be swamped in it necessarily. When we drive through, make a decision to go rescue somebody who might be stranded in their home, that's one thing. But now we're making provisions to get around that. Okay. I just wanted to ask. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Okay. Lappin. Um, as far as the Zodiac goes, mm -hmm. do you use these for like just life-saving events at the beach? They're primarily rescue boats, yes. Okay. So, and, they, and they've been used. Uh, you've seen the news uh, this summer we had uh, two people perish in Seabrook and we were part of that rescue. I know back three years ago we lost a woman out there and I was out there until four o'clock in the morning when we were all standing five feet apart and trying to sure. see if someone came up. Okay. Any other, uh, unfortunately, uh, that didn't happen. But if we had had a boat like that, so so we do. We have two primary vessels. One is Marine One, which is especially for open water. Uh, Marine Two is for closer into the rocks and also in in Hampton Harbor and the river. So it's designed for that. Anything else under fire suppression? Anybody? No. No. Okay, I got a couple of questions. First one is to Christy. We've got a couple items in here. Um, under replacement equipment that appear to be under the umbrella of the fixed asset policy, uh, specifically uh, the marine engines are each five thousand dollars, and you got a hose for five thousand uh, dollars. <coughs> that qualifies for the fixed asset policy, right? And uh, thus, shouldn't it be under the capital outlay? I'll let you answer that at a subsequent meeting, but I have that question throughout the budget. Uh, we need to start, yeah. you know, isolating these capital purchases, and that's what the capital outlay yes. is all about, as far as I can tell. Yeah. And uh, I'll let you think about it, and we'll talk more on that, okay? Um, Chief. Sir. Uh, this is a yes or no question. I like those. Excellent. Uh, we have uh, fireworks detail wages. Uh, which solely supports the Hampton Beach Village District's fireworks display. Correct? Yes. Thank you. Any other questions on the fire suppression? I would just mention about the fireworks. When we shoot those fireworks, we filled the town parking lots with paying customers, which ultimately pay for that support. And we are part of the community. Hmm. And you're right. We also fill the Hampton Beach Village District parking lots. Right. Right. And yet they don't bear any of the expense associated with filling it. Okay. Anyway, we will move on. Now, we bear a lot of expense. <laughs> yeah. I can assure you yeah. that. <laughs> okay. Fire prevention. Anybody with questions or no? Thank you. Oh, <coughs> okay. okay. Uh, communications, something we all enjoy here. You skipped training, sir. Did I? Yes. I'll get back to it then. <laughs> communications. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question. Um, Chief, explain about the telephone. And, and I'm, I'm looking at... Uh, let me just get to it here. <laughs> telephone. Okay, so... 
We've seen a, a market increase in that. So it provides telephone service for both stations, which I understand the fire department communications receiver system, 21 lines under the Centric system, and three Verizon emergency lines. So the cell, you have cellular phone service, Verizon, 5,000, a little over five, then monthly charge phone service, 18,624. Uh, I can tell you with several, if not all, phone companies having dealt with a lot of these issues daily, there are unbelievable deals. Are we getting the best deal for our phone bills, so to speak? Because I got to tell you, they're incredible things now. We're actually part of the, the whole town, if I'm not mistaken, right, Christy? We're, we're all under the Verizon plan. <laughs> for cell phones. For cell phones. So that, when, when our cell phones are up for replacement, we actually go through finance when it comes to that. The Centrex system, the, uh, the other telephones, we have several handsets throughout the building, the EOC, um, fire alarm. Um, down at the beach. Also, they're in the apparatus bay, they're in the lieutenant's office, they're in the day room. So there's a significant amount of voice over IP phones that have been yeah. serviced to that. So this monthly phone service, the 18,000 uh, part of it, that's strictly with cell phones? Strictly? No, the 5,200 is cell phones. 5,200 cell phones. Yeah. And so do we, are the cell phones that we provide, the employees have those from the town? Command staff. Have? Right. I have one. Command the deputy staff. has one. Right. The EMS officer has one. Fire prevention. He also comes he, because he comes in to do fire investigations. There's one in each ambulance, and there's also one in the engines. I'm sorry. The MIFIs. And the MIFIs, which are hotspots, essentially That's correct. Yeah. for each ambulance, and also at the beach engine because they are transmitting their EKGs to the hospital. So in order to do that, they need a, a Verizon connection or a telephone connection to be able to do that. So they'll send their EKG, and it'll arrive at the hospital prior to their arrival. So the doctor can read it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Anything else on communications? Thank you. Uh, Mr. LeBranch, your favorite topic, training. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments on training? No? Thank you. Repair services. Questions? Mr. LeBranch. <coughs> Chief, um, how much did it cost to fix engine four. I don't know the total on that. Primex was involved, so that, that went through the insurance company. We had a oh. deductible. I believe oh, that would okay. cost us $1,000 for the deductible. Oh, okay. Um, so that, that, that was covered under insurance. Yeah, that was a natural disaster, so. Thank you very much. Yes, that's sir. A, that's a, that's a, uh, <laughs> now, the, the, I guess the other thing is that this all goes together with the fire department, the police department getting those big vehicles. Um, we borrowed a couple of them after, after driving Engine 4 into water to, to rescue some people that had driven their car and then were floating away you in call their car. And, um, but, of course, in the future, perhaps, um, I was wondering about using that Zodiac that you talked about. You know, if somebody's in a car that they drove into three feet of water and they can't get out, rather than, well, if you had the big truck. That's certainly our intention. Yeah. to do that. Okay. Um, people call for fire calls. If there's a fire alarm activation or if there's an actual fire, we still have to get through that water. So there may be a time that we are going to go down there to extinguish fire or to investigate a fire call. If it's a rescue call, we are looking at alternate modes of, of getting down to yeah. that. I, one thing that I, um, I want to note is that people took pictures uh, of the flooding on some of those streets that go out into the marsh. Mm. and. There was one picture that bothered me quite a bit, and that was that, of course, each house was an island, and there was three <coughs> feet of water in the street, and they had a, a drone, I think, that flew over the, the street, and you could see the fire hydrant, and it was one foot, there was a foot of water above the fire hydrant. That would certainly, um, if, if one of those houses was on fire, you would go to put it out, of course. You need a fire boat. <laughs> You better start thinking about that, you know? Right. And I'm not kidding. I'm serious. I mean, there were, we had at least three, at least during high tide. Certainly. I, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure what type of a fire boat, but you almost need something, a pump on a boat. On a boat, you stick a pump on a boat. I, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just throwing there. it out there. Thanks. Just throwing it out there. Okay, any other uh, questions or comments on repair services? Well, Thank you. Oh, Mr. DeLuca, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I see that your actual in 2017 was 70924 
you budgeted for 2018 125650 actual year to date as of September you've exceeded that by 2% 128173 and the year is not out do you anticipate going more no this year we had we purchased um, just asking yeah we purchased no to me it was an under budget so right and, and this year we purchased an older engine and we needed to get service done to that. We also yeah. purchased, uh, well, we had to do some serious repairs to the ladder truck um, and engine one. So that certainly caused that to rise. So the question, question, Frank, was that uh, do you plan on additional repairs this calendar year? Right. right. I believe the answer was no. Is that right. correct? Okay. We're, we're not anticipating any. And, and, you're and, not, and you're looking at relatively a flat budget for next year? We are. Okay. Okay. Well set on repair services. Thank you. Um, fire stations and buildings, any questions, comments? The only question I had, and, Mr. I, think, Warburg. and I think, I'm sorry, I didn't raise my hand, sir. Thing. Um, I, I know you explained it to selectmen, but I, I think the public would like to hear it. Talk about the uh, line item on peer maintenance. Sure. That's gone up. Can you, can you go over that a little bit again? So it remains the same, okay. but uh, one of our intentions right now, and, it, and it's definitely weather driven, is to fix the shed okay. that, that houses the equipment down there. Um, there is trim work that needs to be done, it needs to be scraped, and it needs to be painted. Uh, in order to do that and to try to get quotes from, from uh, people who are able to do that over the, over the water and be able to work on that in that environment, it's not an easy process. We've tried several companies and they say, well, first of all, we're too busy. Okay, well, we'll try the next company. We, we won't work over water. So there's some people that we're trying to get that done and we're going to accomplish that this year. I won't be able to do it before the end of the year because uh, the weather's changed on us, it's getting too cold. Are you still, as a fire department, storing the state lifeguard um, vehicles down there? We don't store anything for the state lifeguards. There is a spot on the pier that they can put a dock, and they have their, their right. um, second sea do. But I know we used to store them down yep. we have. But what I'm saying is at the end of the year, I thought they had gone away from that. There was so a there was a change. You're right. Uh, there was a change where they're using a large, um, tired trailer right. to bring that out from the the uh, seashell complex correct and they're bringing their new sea dew down to that the old one does get stationed it's approximately the end of june to the end of august it does get stationed at, uh, at the town at our pier yeah and it's uh i don't believe that it was there in the beginning of the season they had it had it down for maintenance so it wasn't on there directly but they bring it down it's off to so the we right still side. have that good relationship back and forth as far as absolutely that's good thank yep. you that's all yeah. anything else under fire stations and buildings questions comments no thank you very much i believe that concludes the uh, discussion on the fire department chief i believe we have uh two requests for information from you subsequently uh one was the wage comparison study by mr mora and the other one was what's the actual number you will need today to get sufficient protective clothing sure enough, yeah. for yeah. your department. Understood, sir. Thank you. Uh, when, when do you think we could have those items? I can send them to you an email. Uh, the second set, I can have that prepared and sent to you by noon tomorrow. Okay, that's if you'd good. Like. Um, the wage comparison, deputies actually got the information. It'll take him at least two days, right? You know what I mean, tomorrow, so. Next week. And also, to your great point. So before Thanksgiving, on both points. Yes, yes sir. Okay, that's great. To your great point, in addition, on the turnout gear, the addendum to that is, if we can possibly take those expenditures out of money left in this 2018 budget to do that. Well, how it's funded is not their concern. No, their no, concern no, is to tell us, yeah, well, we're, we're, we're part of the process of saying maybe we put it in the budget or otherwise make no, ideas. I understand that, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. So I appreciate you getting back to that information. I appreciate your presentation. Thank, thank you, you for your help and us putting together a budget. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Chief. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Okay.